What is the deal, good people? It's your boy, your big homie, Kicks God. And this is LD Kicks. However, I'm going to kind of talk about uh, something that I have not engaged with um, you, the viewers, in, I, I want to say, ever. Um, and I'm going to be very transparent with... Um, myself and, and well myself as an individual as well as uh, who I am and um, I just want you guys to uh, have that type of relationship with me as a YouTuber uh, under Lifestyles Defined and the Lifestyles Defined banner what it is that I do um that uh, defines me in 2018 or has defined me in 2018. So I guess I'll start with my age. I'm a 41 year old uh, African American male, despite my uh, obvious uh, lighter color. Um, uh, I was born May 26, 1976. And my birthday is actually uh, creeping up that rather quickly. So, um, again, when I, uh, uh, just to preface a little, uh, when I go into conversations and when I talk about uh, whatever, it's sneaker related, but I'm just giving you aspects of my life uh, uh, from moving forward from then to now. And kind of what uh, led me to be the sneaker enthusiast that I am today. I consider myself a sneaker enthusiast as well as uh, a, a person knowledgeable on sneakers. And a person influential uh, to you guys uh, as viewers of my channel. So as I stated, I am a 41, born in 1976. Um, and my most earliest understanding or um, kind of comedic uh, sense of sneakers or, or encounter with sneakers began when I was, uh, I would say, uh, in first grade. And um, I'm from Brooklyn, if you guys, if I haven't already put that out there, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And, um, you know, schools are abundant in Brooklyn, New York. There's schools everywhere. Damn near, you walk down a couple of blocks and I'm almost certain you'll probably find another school. If you guys don't already know, if you're not from um, Brooklyn. So, um, yeah, so... Um, I'm in, I'm in the first grade and my most notable, I've always liked, I've always been a person that, um, was fascinated with sneakers. Um, so along with me being in the first grade at this particular time and my most notable, um, uh, experiences with sneakers, uh, the first notable experience was, uh, I was bought my first pair and this is Past, I'm not even starting with pro kids, pro players, or what have you. This is back in the days. If you guys don't know what pro players, pro players are, then you you're not a sneakerhead. I'm I'm sorry to say it. However, transitioning from pro kids and pro players, my first uh, remembrance about sneakers was uh, a pair of Nike Cortez. They were. They were like a, they weren't navy blue. They were more like a, a royal blue with like a white check. If I, if I can even closely remember, it were like, like royal blue with a white check. The, the outsole was your typical Cortez, uh, uh, nylon, I'm sorry, um, rubber, the, uh, the, with the ridge, the ridge or the, 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 uh, almost looked serrated. Uh, knife like uh, army army knife like serrations um along with the midsole being that rubber with the white line going through it 
I'm sorry, the blue line going through it. Um, and then you had the upper, which was part uh, suede and part nylon. You had the leather check. You had all of that stuff in uh, my most, again, one of my other memories about the Cortez and how I always knew that uh, 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 it was a Nike and this was Nike and this was something special because it was Nike was uh, the front of the Cortez always put me in the mind of the McDonald's M, the McDonald's Golden Arch. So I used to call them the McDonald's sneakers. But of course they were Nike or the Nike Cortez. So, um, and moving on, my memory about the sneaker was it, I was wearing them to a school and I was just feeling, you know, you know, there's two ways you can light lace, uh, um, your sneakers up with making the two loops or your conventional, uh, um, fold over, uh, on over and under loop. And that's that, that's the, uh, the, the technical way the two loops automatically is the more difficult way, because if one of those loops slip out and it pulls, yeah, it's going to be difficult to get that knot out. So hence my dilemma, I'm fiddling and fondling with these loops at school and I'm tying my sneakers back and lo and behold, Somehow, uh, I got that infamous knot in those sneakers and I walked home. I couldn't get the sneaker off. I couldn't get the knot out. It was just a catastrophe. I lived about maybe four blocks away from my school. Hence, <laughs> block after block, you probably find a school in Brooklyn. But, um, so, uh, um, I make it home. And my grandmother is home and she helps me get my sneaker off my foot. And then on goes the day. Um, and that's my first notable memory of uh, sneakers. Again, I have always been fascinated by sneakers. So my next mo most notable memory of sneakers is um, I got a pair of um, Adidas and I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't recall the name, but they, they recently retro not too long ago. Um, and the, in the Knicks colorway. So listen, if you know, guys know the name of that sneaker, it, it was a white, orange, and blue. Uh, they, they were the original Patrick Ewings. If you guys know the name of this sneaker, leave it in the comment section below. So, um, I actually had the sneaker in white, black, and metallic silver. So I must have been, I must have been, uh, I was, I was in junior high school, maybe fifth grade. It was somewhere between fifth grade and sixth grade. Uh, so what I'm about, uh, between 12, 11, 11 and 12, maybe 13, give or take. I, I wasn't 13 because I was 13 in high school. So I want to say maybe um, 11 and 12, between 11 and 12 years old. And I got those along with the Air Nike Air Pegasus. And the Pegasus was like charcoal gray black with a blue stripe, uh, blue Nike uh, check. And um, um, oh, I love those. Those two sneakers, I loved. I was just fascinated by. Uh, and I, I never forget, I got them at the same time. So this was the first time I were I was able to kind of extend the life of uh, my sneakers because I had two pair to alternate between. And I wore them with whatever. When you're a child, you really don't care about uh, what your fit looks like. You're just going to put the sneakers on and you're going to assume that well, everything is dandy because um, you're wearing sneakers and you're wearing nice looking sneakers at the time. So um, to my to my liking of today of uh, Air Pegasus, I really like Air Pegasus um, um, sneakers. I wish I was able to cop those sneakers um, now that I had then. But the uh, failure on Nike's part, no retro, whatever. Um, so my next pair 
of sneakers came when I was in my first year in maybe last last year in junior high school or first year and um um in high school late junior high school early high school it came around I want to say early high school it came around the time when everything neon was popular you had Columbia Columbia jackets and Columbia suits and Columbia this and Columbia that that all was a big thing when I was in high school so um, I was able to cop a pair of ACG trail uh, uh, trail runners. I don't think that's the official name for them, but it was a trail. It was a trail hybrid of a sneaker, and um, also very very dope. I loved them. It had the ACG around the heel on the midsole. Um, it had that trail like uh, uh, outsole, and and it, it had a neon green Nike Nike swoosh or Nike check. And again, more on a kind of charcoal gray black side. Um, loved them. I loved them. I loved them. I loved them. I thought they were so dope until I, uh, and mind you, all this time is passing and not once did I receive and did I buy or purchase or was I able to cop any Air Jordans. So the next time um, I'm in, I'm in high school. And it's my first year again, late in the late in my first year of high school, I was able to cop the, I was going for the 80, the eight, 1989 metallic black air Jordan fives. Um, they were sold out all over the place. Uh, people pretty much, I guess that's when a, the real hype started, uh, with air Jordans and, uh, so on and so forth. It was four, three and four, but it, it, I think it really started with the fives. So I was unable to get those. And um, my mom, I never forget, we walked all over downtown Brooklyn, a uh, big Fulton Street, big shopping area and looking for the Air Jordan 88s. And I was able to, I was stored it, but I was able to find the Air Max 90 in that original, one of the original colorways. It was the green the it was the dark green i believe it was mineral green with the volt or neon green nike swoosh it had gray and 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 it had gray on the uh portions of the outsole where around the the or it might have been green but it had gray green and volt basically was the um was the colorway so again awesome sneaker i played basketball in those sneakers i i i fell i remember playing basketball and on outside i fell and and gashed them open and, and that was that and i ended up having to wear them because you know my mom wasn't buying me another pair of sneakers so um but at the end of the day those Air Max 1990s were the sneaker, and I wish Nike would retro them, but again, fail on Nike, whatever. So, moving forward, now, um, my brother started working for a company, uh, go without saying, that actually, at the time, got you 50% off on all Nike purchases. So, uh... My first Nike that was the first Jordan that was uh, I ever was able to cop was the Air Jordan, uh, excuse me, the Air Jordan 7, the Bordeaux. So in my possession, that was my first Air Jordan sneaker. And that sneaker meant the world to me. I, I, it fit awesome. It was comfortable. I just loved it. And what drove me to Air Jordans was um, my brother had actually had the Air Jordan uh, black, the Air Jordan Six infrared and uh, and black and infrared, and I thought they were just dope. They just smelled different than any other sneaker ever. Hence my thing about smelling sneakers in that glue or whatever. I don't know. Maybe I have some some sort of obsession with uh, sniffing glue, whatever. But um, that whole aspect of sneakers 
is what really started me on my path to being a sneakerhead or a sneaker enthusiast. It was those it was those early years that uh, made me so knowledgeable about sneakers at this point in time, which is why I can say um, whatever I want to say about a sneaker and in, in, in some aspects be incorrect. I was able to um, uh, have the privilege of working directly across the street from uh, what's called City Sport. I'm not sure if they're still there, but God damn it, if I didn't buy a pair of sneakers every week, I got my paycheck, sometimes two pair of sneakers. Uh, I, I just did what I did. I mean, yeah, it's one of my first jobs. Uh, uh, so, but just to rewind just a bit past that, I actually was able to cop with my own money, my first pair of Air Jordans, which were the Air Jordan 12s, the Cherries, the Obsidian Blues were my first pair of Air Jordans that I was able to cop with my own money. Uh, later on, after I started my job, uh, uh, cause I actually worked for Blockbuster, Blockbuster Video, shout out all my peoples at Blockbuster Video. Uh, that was my first job. Then I went to Citicorp or Citibank and I was able to cop the playoff 12s, um, with my own money, whatever the case may be. And from that point moving forward, everything else was just a cop of whatever I wanted. And at that time, holding on to sneakers wasn't a big thing for me. Um, now it's as it is now. I'd wear them. They beat. They wouldn't get beat. They were always decent condition. But after a certain time, and I would, I got tired of them. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not wearing these anymore. So, you know, I was able to uh, 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 just buy buy new sneakers. Um. We, I was able to cop the uh, now coined. He got game, um, Air Jordan, Air Jordan 13s. Um, I was able to cop the bread 13s. The uh, I never got the playoff 13s, but uh, and I was also able to cop the Flint Blue Air Jordan 13s. So, um, moving on, I was able to cop the 14s. Last shots. The uh, cherries in the lat and the in the Air Jordan 14s, and then I became uh, in 2000 uh, a correction officer. So please don't beat me in the head. I'm not as bad as people make me out to be. I'm sorry. Yes, I actually work for the New York City Department of Corrections, and uh, I guess to say the least, they pay pretty well. And then now we're talking. The ability to um, purchase these sneakers at a faster rate and more at one time. So, hence me becoming the person that I am now, my collection, whatever the case may be. So, basically to uh, um, take you guys up to about 2005, 2006. And this is lengthy, but I'm bringing this all to a close and all... All to uh, um to 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 a, a a perfect 360 circle. Um, 2005 2006, I became big with Air Force Ones, and Air Force Ones I felt were like the the more calm. Like I was more, I think I considered myself more grown. I didn't want to do the Air Jordans anymore, and I didn't want to do the the, the, the Nike Air Max. I even considered a couple of pair of Air Max. Maybe I bought maybe one or two and I was like, I can't do the Air Max anymore because for starters, Air Force Ones in many cases were just, uh, I was getting a lot. I uh, just, so, so to put it all in perspective, I may have had, hmm, I want to say 200, maybe 240 to almost, almost 260 pair of Air Jordan. I'm sorry, pair of Air Force Ones. And that was minus any Jordans that I did buy at that particular time. There were Jordans that I liked that I did buy. 
the Air Jordan 21s, Air Jordan 20s. Um, uh, I, I don't think I bought the 19s. I'm not quite sure. But um, so for from 2006 to about 2008, 2009, maybe 2010, um, I was wearing Air Mac. I'm, I'm sorry, Air, Air Force Ones. And then throughout sprinkled that in that time, I was picking up Air Jordans, more Air Jordans, more. Uh, or Air Max this or Air Jordan that and I never really picked up anything else other than Air Jordan or Nike brand um, um, footwear excuse me so now fast forward to 2013 I'd say maybe 2013, 2000, well, 2012, 2011, 2012, give or take. Well, once we, as a unit, uh, myself, Ramon, and uh, other uh, uh, people, Snow, uh, from Lifestyles to Find, uh, 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 came, we became a unit, or uh, Lifestyles to Find became an entity. Uh, basically, I still, we were doing more tech and, and more tech and video, video game type, type of, uh, um, uh, YouTube material. And, um, I hadn't really branched off into sneakers. Nigel, again, shout out Nigel was, uh, uh, basically our resident sneakerhead. He was the young man. Uh, uh, he had the fresh knowledge about what was hot in the sneaker game. And I was just buying sneakers, but I wasn't reviewing them. So, um, I'd say maybe two years, a year from that point, maybe 2014. I kind of, I, that, that kind of maybe 2013, late 2013, 2014, Ramon comes to me and says, yo, uh, Press pause on everything you're doing on the website. Start focusing on sneakers. Because I was already big doing uh, sneaker posts on our website, lifestylesofine.com. So he, 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 I guess he saw what I was doing there and was like, yo, you know what? Um, I think you can do this. I think you could do this on a more grandiose scale. So... I started reviewing sneakers and a transition of the type of reviews. It went from what's coming out, talking about it to actually having a sneaker in hand and talking about it to uh, having more detailed uh, uh, conversation about a sneaker, so on and so forth, moving on to what it is today. Um, And here we are, my... uh, you might see kind of a, a, a very small portion of what I have in my collection. Everything else is over there in the, in the closet. But, um, um, and I guess that is the 360 degree of my sneaker head ism. Is that a word? I don't know. But my sneaker head ism or my love and or my passion for sneakers and uh fashion at this point in time so what's next for me um well i would like to i I am inspiring um to uh, start my own clothing line um it's I'm not going to dive very deep into uh the the parameters of the clothing line but I will say that um, it will be, it will be, it, I'm inspiring it to be, uh, a, a very supreme type of off-white type of fear of God type of line of clothing. Um, it's, it's, it won't be a normal average clothing line that you see. It's not going to be a supreme knockoff. It's not going to be an off-white knockoff. It's going to be something inspired, um, and motivated behind uh, uh, personal strengths and personal uh, uh, triumphs, and and uh, that's that's my motivation behind 
my clothing line. And um, yeah, man, listen, um, I know I hope I wasn't too lengthy. Um, I just wanted to get this out there. I felt like you guys deserve um, a right to know who you're talking to. You know, you're not just, I'm not just a face in front of a camera, uh, whose, whose batteries overheat or whose camera overheats and shuts down. So, but, um, I, I'm not just a face in front of a camera. I am a person. I'm a real person. Just like you guys out there. I'm, I'm genuine. I'm authentic. You can send me any type of message in the con in the, in the questions or the comment section below. I will answer them in time. Um, um, I, I just, I'm a normal person. I go to work every day and I think that's what the biggest distance or disconnect between my show and Ramon's show and everybody else's out there. Um, we work every day and there are times where we come home and we have significant others that, um, demand our attention. And we have uh, uh, situations that go on at our job that demand our undivided attention. And this is not our main source of income. If, and, and quite honestly, YouTube is not a huge source of income at this point in time. We'll get there. I'm not, we're not concerned about that. However, um, uh, just note that in the coming months and years and what have you, I don't, I don't think that I'm stopping anytime soon. And I don't think Ramon is stopping anytime soon, but, uh, we can only get bigger and we can only get bigger through you guys, your views and your attention. And I think that's about as big as, or as much as I can say in almost a half hour. So, Listen, shout out to you guys. Shout out to my family, my LD family. Shout out to you and your family for taking the time out to just listen to what I have to say. Even if you skim through some of what I'm saying, as long as you made it to the end, that's most important. Um, I feel like what I'm saying is just me being genuine and being authentic. And there's a lot of fake and phony out there on YouTube. I'm just trying to give you something different, give you something authentic. So, it's your boy Kicks God. Follow me on all 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 social media platforms. Uh, follow our channels, LD Everything. Links in the description below. Um, give me a thumbs up if you're feeling what I'm saying on this video. If you have any questions, if you have any opinions, if you want to talk about. Uh, the fact that I'm a correction officer. Listen, leave it in the comment section below. I know a lot of people got feelings about that. I will dispel any feelings that you may have. Um, it's your boy Kick Scott. I'm out of here. Peace.